What's up, Facebook? Hope you're doing well today. Welcome to the Feta Effect. I'm trying a new thing here. I'm turning my camera sideways so you guys can see more of my face. Anyways, I want to talk to you guys today about something very important. Before I do that, it would be rude of me not to introduce myself. So I'm Jerry with AG Capital. Uh, what we do is we help business owners save 50% on group health insurance um, annual costs. We reduce their cost per employee down to $200 a month. And then we provide complimentary wealth coaching to every single employee to increase productivity and redu reduce turnover for the business. That's what I do. If you're just tuning in, please share the stream. I'm going to be talking about why health insurance is a scam um, and what you can do about it. Okay. So what's ironic is I actually sell health insurance and I think it's a scam. Okay. So the good thing about that is the same thing that I like to look for with a tax accountant. When I work with a CPA or a bookkeeper, I want to work with someone that believes taxation is a scam. Why? Because they learn all of the rules, they know all about it, and they can help me get free from it. They can, you know, they can find all of the deductions, the loopholes, and they're not going to do that if they don't think there's something fundamentally wrong with taxation. Okay, so health insurance, we all pay it. It's illegal not to, just like car insurance, right? Um, it is the second biggest scam in the country, and the first biggest scam I've already mentioned is income tax. Um, and so I want to talk, though, about the second biggest scam today, which is health insurance. So again, I am Jerry with AG Capital. Please share the stream. Go ahead and share, 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 share it up. Have a great Friday as you're watching this. Let your friends have a great Friday as you're watching this. So here's how health insurance works. A long time ago, insurance companies didn't really play a part. Okay, So someone would go to the hospital and the hospital would say, hey, we're in business. We just want to make a profit just like every other company. And so what would happen is a hospital would say, dang, Jeremy Tompkins, you need your arm amputated. That's going to cost $50. So we're going to charge you 60 and that's our reasonable profit margin. What started happening is hospitals realized that they can increase rates and people have to pay. I mean, you go to the hospital, what are you going to do, right? You can't choose not to have your arm amputated if that's what's going to happen. Jeremy says, not again. Um, it's already happened to him once. We call him stubs around here at the office. It's all right. He thinks it's funny too. Um, anyways, what ends up happening is these insurance companies started to get into the picture and the liaisons from the insurance company would go to the hospital and they would say, hey, um, you know, we're starting to get clients. We send you a ton of business. And so we want discounted rates for our clients so that our insurance looks more attractive. And so the hospitals would say, well, you guys do send us a ton of business and we don't want to forfeit that. So sure, we'll give you a discount. So what did they do? They did the same thing that car dealerships do. Okay, Have you ever been to a sale at a car dealership? It's never actually a sale, right? You go to the dealership, they have their MSRP sticker price, they jack it way up, way more than they would usually charge, and then they give you a discount off the jacked up price. Right? We all know that that's what happens at a car dealership. I don't know that we all know that this is exactly what happens at the hospital. Okay, so the hospital basically said, sure, insurance liaison, we'll give you a discount because you need to go back to your boss and just tell them we got a discount. So they jacked their prices up. They have what's called a rate book, and they basically, in that rate book, have all of all of the price points for what they'll charge per service, right? That you know, if you're getting aspirin, they'll say, hey, an aspirin is seven dollars or nine dollars. If you eat the food, it's not even good, but they overcharge for that too. If you get a surgery, dude, you better be ready to pay. That's gonna be like thirty thousand dollars minimum. Right, So they give a discount to the insurance company off of this jacked up sticker price. All right, So what ends up happening is the insurance company, of course, pays it because that's what insurance companies do. But the insurance company also is trying to make a profit. Right, So the hospital jacked up the price. The insurance company said, hey, we got our discount. We can now pay this. And they said, holy shoot, man, that's a big price. How are we going to cover this and still make profit? Oh, I know. We're going to pass it on to our clients through an increase in premiums okay that's the trickle down effect that's why you pay so much money for health insurance and i just want to take a pause real quick if you're just tuning in i am jerry with ag capital if you don't know me that's my fault we're fixing that today please share the video if you know that somebody out there needs to know this information we're talking about why health insurance is a scam it's the second biggest scam in the country next to income tax and we just talked about how hospitals overcharge 
for fake insurance prices so that insurance companies will cover the bill and still make profit for the hospital. And then that overcharged price that the insurance company covers gets passed along to you and I with an expensive premium. Okay, so this is what happens. Now, this has evolved. It's always been this way, but it's evolved. And now our government has stepped in and said, hey, we're going to help foot the bill. Okay, free money's on the table, right? So insurance companies are in business for profit. Okay, so are hospitals. I don't care who you are. You go to a hospital, that place is making money. And they're looking at it and saying, man, the government is giving us free money. I wonder how much of that we can get. So they bring their rates up even more because there's this big pool of money that's available and all they've got to do is show that, yep, this is the rate price, this is what the hospital charges the insurance company, and this is what the insurance company has to charge on the premium, and so therefore the client has to get a tax subsidy to cover the premium. So the hospital knows this, the insurance company knows this, and so they jack with your price just because they can. Just because they can, okay? This is why Health insurance is the second biggest scam out there. Guys, you need to share this information with somebody that needs to see it. Most people don't know that this is how insurance operates. Okay, So those are two bad things. I wanna share with you the third bad thing. The third bad thing, and it's the main reason that this happens. It's the main, the main root. I just talked about two symptoms. I'm about to tell you the root. Okay, The root behind this is that you and I freaking pay the bill. Okay, The reason that hospitals do this the reason insurance companies do this, the reason this happens is because they know that you and I will pay. They know that we're going to pay our premium anyways. They know that we're not going to do anything about it. They know that we're going to go on living life and we're not going to try and fight it. Okay, It's no different than what happened in 2008. I don't know if you guys watched that movie, The Big Short. It's the same concept. It's just with you know insurance instead of mortgages. The reason Wall Street did what they did in 2008 is because they knew that you and I, middle class America, would foot the bill for their mistake, that we would cover the expense. And the only reason they know that is because of history. We always do. That's just how it works. You know, you and I let it happen, and so they know that next time they just do the same thing again and they'll make us pay for it. So what do I do with companies? I, I like I said, I offer insurance. So it's kind of ironic, right? And a health insurance broker is telling you that health insurance is the greatest scam out there. Okay, like I related to earlier, the reason you guys want to work with me on your health insurance is because I know it's a scam. It's the same reason that I will only work with a tax person or a bookkeeper that believes taxation is theft. Okay, I don't want somebody that thinks the system is good. I want somebody that knows the system is broken and it's their job to help me navigate out of it. Okay, That's what I do with you on your insurance. So when we work with companies, we basically look at you know, how is the scam playing out? If we can understand the scam and we know how it plays out and what the rules are, we can fly above it and start taking advantage of it. Okay, we can start making it work in our favor. So what I do is I look at, where's the money available? Okay, the money is not available within your company. Your company is in business for profit. So if the money's available in your company, you better have big pockets because you're gonna start paying a lot for insurance. Where the money is currently available is tax credits. Okay? When I go to the individual marketplace and I buy my insurance, there are tax credits that are going to help me cover the premium. So if I'm a company, what I'm thinking is how can I get access to those tax credits so that the government pays for my insurance and not me? I don't care. I don't like taxes. I don't like government assistance. I hate all of that stuff. But at the end of the day, when it's between my business's survival and expansion and my employees and their families and an insurance premium, dude, I'm making Uncle Sam pay the bill. Okay, so we restructured the premium so that companies have the access, the access that individuals have to the individual marketplace and also the access that individuals have to the tax subsidies. Okay, an example of this, this is a real life story. I met with a guy two weeks ago, right? He's working with a company here locally. His overall insurance cost, like the total monthly premium with his company was $700 a month. Okay, he was paying about $250 of that and his company was covering the rest. So what did we do? We ran some quotes for him on the individual marketplace and we found an alternative that lowered his overall premium cost from $700 down to $100 a month. Okay, so the, the premium costed $700 and we got it down to $100 a month. So we're going to meet with this company and his boss and we're going to do that with all of the insurance. Okay, imagine how much money this company is going to save if all of the premiums go down 700%.
Okay, and imagine how much they won't have to match. If they're doing half, I would much rather do half as a company of 100 bucks than have to do half or two thirds of 700 bucks, right? So the company is gonna save big money. The employee is also saving big money because his insurance only costs $100 a month now. Okay, this is because there are better options out there than going directly through a group plan. And so we restructure it just like that. So if you're watching this and your company currently has a group plan through Aetna or Primera and it's directly there, you're overpaying on your insurance by 50% or more. Okay, and so we can come into your company, work with your employer. If you are an employer, we can come into your company and work with you directly and we can lower those premiums down for you and for the employees and put that money back in your pocket because you know where that money needs to go? That money needs to go into your investments and I'm not talking about your 401k plan. You need to be saving that money. You need to be looking for cash flowing investments and you need to be building wealth and that's really what you need to be saving for and if you're not doing that, at least go blow the money. Like it's better than putting it towards insurance. If you don't care about wealth, at least go out and have you know excitement in your life and enjoy that money rather than having it go to Primera or Aetna. Okay, so that's exactly what we do for clients and companies. Now, I want to talk to 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 business owners specifically and also employees. If you are a business owner, I hear this all the time. If you are a business owner and you're complaining about having crappy employees, quite frankly, people that don't work hard. That's on you. If you're not providing a benefits package that makes them feel secure and certain and motivates them to produce, that's totally on you, okay? It, it's like if you have kids, what would your kids do if every time you they did something good, you disciplined them instead of rewarding them? Like when they produced, when they helped with the laundry, they did the dishes, you disciplined them instead of rewarding them. They would stop doing the production because they're like, every time I do the laundry, I get spanked and I don't know why. And if you started rewarding them when they did wrong things, what do you think they're gonna do? They're gonna do more of the, more of the wrong things because that's exactly what they get rewarded for. So if you're a company, I want you to think about this. Your employees devote 40 hours a week of their life to you, okay? The only thing they do more than come work for you is sleep. Okay, and the reason they're tired is because they work for you. So they're working 40 hours a week plus, right? And that in, a, in itself should be rewarded, right? That's baseline, that's a vital target that they come to work energized. That should be rewarded and you're getting them insurance benefits that take away three to $400 a month out of their paycheck. And so they already see a huge cut just on taxes and FICA and Medicare and all that stuff. But on top of that, they're paying three to $400 a month in insurance. So you're, you're penalizing them for coming to work and you're not doing it intentionally. It's not like you're aggressive and, and doing it out of ill intent. You know, it's, it's, not, it's not an intention, but it's happening. And so they don't care or know about your intent. All they know is I come to work and I come home and I have just enough money to make it to the next Friday and my, my bank account's empty and I've got to wait for that next paycheck. Okay, and if you're an employee, you guys know what I'm talking about. You experience this. So. What I do with employers is I restructure the benefits and then I work with their employees one-on-one. -on -one. My team goes in, we do wealth coaching with their employees so that we can increase the financial education and certainty in the environment, okay? When people come to work, did you know that more than two-thirds of your employees come to work right now and they worry about financial problems while they're on the clock? Like they're worrying about their mortgage, they're worrying about their credit card debt, they're worrying about their car payment and that energy is being directed towards these financial problems rather than toward production, okay? So in my company, I make sure that I heavily reward production. Like I, I tell my, my I, I talk about my team all the time, I tell everyone I work them like slaves and I pay them like kings, okay? And they don't care because they love getting paid like kings. So you have to align your benefits program in order to get your employees productive, okay? Now, Dusty Hogate, I don't know if you're watching, I wanna address your question yesterday. Um, I did a video the other day, I'm gonna tie this in about why we lose our success. So if you've ever been on top of the world, like you've been killing a goal, and then suddenly, you know, you end up falling off and, and it, you know, your, your, your success just plummets and you're down in the ditch again. Okay, what happens is you let your, your hair down, you relaxed, okay, you stopped doing the things that got you up top and that caused you to plummet downhill, okay? So the way that I'm tying this in right now is Dusty's question was, you know, he said, I agree with that. Now. What, like when do you relax? When do you stop? When do you let your hair down? So I wanna tie this in. When you relax is always, like 
and I, and I want to make sure you guys get this. You need to align your work with your life such that you do not feel like it's stealing from your life when you go to work. So when you go to work, if you feel fulfilled, if you know you're taken care of, if you're certain, if you love what you do, you don't feel like you need to relax. And when you do relax, you're meshing it in with work. So if you see me and my wife, you know, when we go on dates, we're, we're branding ourselves, we're marketing that, we're advertising that. When we do stuff out in the community, we're making sure that we're always talking about our business because it's part of our life. It's not a subcategory off to the side. So when I go on a vacation, that's part of my business. That's part of my life. That's part, it's all flowing together. Do you, see, do you see what I mean? So if you're an employer, again, I'm tying this in. If you're an employer and you have a poor benefits package, your employees don't feel like their job is part of their life. Okay? Your employees feel like they are segmented away from what really matters 40 hours a week and they have to do this slave thing you know, 40 hours a week so that they can have a life on the weekends. And so what's happening and, and why that's happening is because they are not being incentivized for their production. They're not being incentivized. You know, I own and run my own business and I love my business, but I don't love what I do every day. Like there are parts of my day where I'm like, oh, I gotta do that again. You know, I don't enjoy it. The reason I do it is because the payoff is so great. So your employees, think about this, they don't run your business. They don't own your business. They're coming in and they're working for you, okay? So at least I have pride of ownership. And if you're a business owner, you do too. Like just the simple pride of ownership makes you show up every day. Your employees don't have that. All they have is the task you give them. And if they don't love the task, then all they have is the compensation that they get for doing that task. Do you see what I'm saying? So if you do not compensate properly for the tasks you're giving your employees, mentally they segment it away. They don't like coming to work and they don't feel like they get paid enough and so you end up getting you know, unproductive employees. And most employers I talk about, this is their issue. So I'm tying this all in and saying, health insurance is your most important benefit. If you are in a company, it's your most important benefit. Okay, if you're an employer, this is your deal, health insurance, okay? Yes, you have the 401k, yes, you have the group life insurance, you got all that stuff, cool, but your employees know that the most urgent and like closest degree to their life is health insurance. What if I go to the hospital? What if I have a baby, okay? Retirement's like 40 years away, right? Especially if you have millennials, they're not freaking thinking about retirement. That, that's not even on their mind. They're not thinking about life insurance. You know, with term insurance, there's a 2% chance that you die and you actually use it. People know that. So when you have a poor health insurance package and, and your employees know that, and they are coming to work for you to do tasks that they probably don't love, they are disincentivized from performing at a world-class level. And the way that you fix that is you fix the benefit package. You start over rewarding and overcompensating for the production you wanna see, okay? So I help companies do that. I help you restructure your health insurance program, okay? So that your employees feel like they're getting paid what they're worth. And if they're getting paid what they're worth and they're good people, and most people are, they're willing to do all these crappy tasks that nobody actually wants to do. The reason that, the reason that you have employees if you're a business owner, and if you're an employee, this is, this is the flat out truth. If you work for a company, this is the flat out truth. The reason a company has employees is because they need to hire people to do stuff that the owner doesn't like to do, okay? So by definition, like if you're an employee, your job is there because your owner does not like that work. So he basically said, eh, I need to find someone else to do this because it sucks. So you're getting a job that sucks. And the only way it makes it worth it is if there's purpose in the work and there's compensation to reward production and to make sure that that employee is well paid and well taken care of. So answer your question, Dusty. The way that you, you do life with that, that mentality of never let your hair down, never slow down, is you mix it in with everything. Okay, You do take the vacation, but you make sure that you're producing on that vacation. You do go on the date with your spouse. You make sure that you are producing when you're on that date. So everything should be intermixed. It's your life. You don't have different compartments. It's one big thing. And it's basically a box of what can I fit in here before I die. All right? So that's what I wanted to talk about today. More of the story. Health insurance is a gigantic scam. I know that. I understand that. That's why I do health insurance is because I see the pain it causes businesses and I see the pain it causes families and individuals. And I want to help you get out. I understand the scam. I know how it works and I know how to help you get out bottom line. So if you're a company, if you're a company and you have employees, I can lower your annual insurance costs by 50% per year. That's right. I can cut them in half. 
I can lower your per employee cost to $200 a month. So the amount you pay per head per employee, I can take that down to $200 a month. And then I'm also going to come in with my team. I'm going to do a free wealth creation formula, a coaching session one-on-one -on -one with every single employee to help them confront their finances, set goals, overcome obstacles, and start to have a level of certainty with their finances to the point that they don't bring their problems to work. When they come to work, they're excited to be there. Their money is taken care of. They know how to handle it. You can pay them well and you know that they're gonna go do smart things with it. And when they come to work, they can just produce, right? If you're a boss or an employer, like how great does that sound? And even if you're an employee, how great does that sound? To, to come to work, not because you need money, but because you love doing something. You love helping other people and contributing to a larger goal. Like your money's taken care of, you just need something to do with your time and that's why you work. And that's what wealth is. That's what I help everybody get to. And this is my way of doing that. So again, my name is Jerry with AG Capital. Uh, I'm just gonna tell you one more time. I help business owners save 50% on their annual health insurance premiums. I help them lower their per employee cost down to $200 a month. And then I come in and I do a free one-on-one -on -one coaching session to help your employees become financially certain and build wealth so that they can come to work because they want to work, not because they feel like they're slaves because you don't want slaves, you want people that wanna come in and produce, okay? So I'm gonna sign out for today. Share the stream, please. If this inspires you, share it. All you guys that are liking it, I love that. If you have questions or comments, I'm literally one of the most transparent and accessible people that you're ever gonna meet. I'm on every social media platform out there. I keep it easy. Just Google Jerry Feta. Go to Instagram, go to, go to Snapchat, go to Facebook, go to Twitter. I'm on Steemit, I'm on Medium, I'm on Google+. Check me out. I have all of the information out there. I don't hold back content. A lot of times people hold back content to create scarcity so that you feel like you need to go, for, go to them for more information. I don't play games like that. I give you guys the information because I know it's gonna help and then I, I put together an action plan for you to start applying it. So I'm gonna sign off for today. Again, share the stream. Hit me up on, on direct message. Email me, jerry at agcapitalgroup.com. I'm gonna post my website in the comments. Hey, if you go to our website and you, you ask a question, you submit a contact form, we'll send you a, literally a free book. We have a 40-page book. It's called The Millionaire Booklet. It's one of the best books I've ever read on finances. It's short, you can get through it in one sitting. We mail those out to anybody that comes to our website. Anybody that has questions automatically gets a free book. So we believe in give, give, give. We wanna make sure that we, when we transact with people, we transact in abundance. So even just come ask a question. Hey, how much does health insurance cost? Hey, how much can you save my business? Hey, you know, what are some more services and products you offer? Or if you want a career with us, hey, what does it take to come interview? We're going to answer your question and we're going to give you a book. So again, thank you guys for watching. Have a great Friday. Have a great weekend. I will talk to you next time.